what is not often discussed is what substrate to use to grow out your bonsai. Over the next year or two, I'm going to grow these out in different substrates to see how this affects the development. My regular substrate, lava, pumice and zeolite, and akadama. In akadama, I was going to mix 50-50 with the zeolite. Now, I have all these seedlings here. They are from last year and I'm going to do a little bit of a comparison. This is what I'm going to do. It's going to be a year or two years in the making this video, but you know, that's what I do for you. Let's get started. I'm going to select 10 trees that are roughly of equal size and equal thickness. All straight ones without any ramification. Let's see if I have 10 of those in here. I'm going to wire these out before I plant them up. And what I'm going to do, it is now the middle of summer. I'm not going to plant them out in the substrate right now. No, I have just pots that are slightly bigger and I'm just going to plant them in there with a bit of extra substrate. So they have a few more months to settle in. And then in spring, I will pot them in the little pots that I'm going to use for this experiment. So I just have one and a half millimeter aluminium, push it a little bit in the soil for hold, wire out a seedling, just like that. It doesn't have to be fancy, right? You can just very quickly do this. And then I'm just giving it a little bit of a irregular shape in all directions. This in itself is enough to get them started. Pay attention to the lower trunk. Pay attention that you have tight little bends in multiple directions. And then it is all good to go. Just like that. Now I'm making 10, not because I want to use 10 for the experiment, but because I want to be able to, in fall or in spring when I'm repotting these, um, to select similar ones in size. Now I can just add the normal substrate, normal regular potting soil, and get these all going for the rest of the season. As these have not been fertilized, and they have been in the small pots for over a year, I expect the addition of space and fertilize it through this potting mix to get a little bit of growth more this year and probably in winter I can remove the wires again. Winter is over, trees have started to grow, time to look at these again. I'm going to prune the roots, I'm going to make sure they're all of roughly equal length. I'm going to get them out of this muck, look at how ugly and dirty this organic has come. And I think for fairness sake I'm going to just chop them all at the same height. Right, I managed to find three small pots and three big pots. Um, so that means I'm going to get a set of one tree and of two trees in the same pot and three different types of variety of substrate. And I'm just going to look at the difference in growth speed and root development. If all goes well, then the Akadama should have the finest root development, but probably also the lower growth because it really is something that you add for refinement rather than for growing out. But let's get these bare rooted and cut to size. So I need nine plants. These are 10. Let's see. This is by far the biggest. That could be an outlier. And yeah, I think the others are this one, this one, and that one are of similar size. This one, this one are similar size. These are of similar size, so that could be a nice pairing. Yeah, and now it really is pretty arbitrary. Just going to reduce these roots all to basically just the base of the root ball for all of these plants. It's a bit of a rough treatment, but hey, you want to participate in the game, you better be able to stand the fire, right? So now we shall see which one is the best substrate. My regular substrate, lava, pumice and zeolite, and akadama. In akadama I was going to mix 50-50 with the zeolite, just like that. Oh, now I need to get new zeolite of course. 
and of course mix well. So the three biggest ones, they are similar in size, but this one is a little bit smaller. Now if I remove these side branches here, and then say these have to be the same size, then this one ends up being at this size, and this one similarly prune it back at that size. Now they are all roughly of equal size. Here the same story, these three are roughly of equal thickness. There's one with a side branch, I'm removing this one. Then I'm looking for the shortest one. There we go. All of them at the same length. Prune these back all the way to this first bud. Now at least height-wise they're the same, roughly the same root balls. And I guess with that they're all potted up, ready to be watered and then planted for the rest of the year in a sunny position. It is November, let's see how these plants have done. I have here my regular substrate. This is the Lava Pumice Zeolite and this is the one with 50% Akadama in there. And if I just look at first glance, these individually potted up have not done all that differently. All of them have a little side branches. This one may be a little bit less than these two. Growth, equal height, so there's no big difference. Also, very clear, all of them have had escape roots at the bottom of the pots. Then the big ones, basically the same story, right? If you just look at these, you don't say one of them is much bigger than the other. However, again, my own substrate is a little bit smaller than these two. I would say these are pretty much the same. Right, now what I'm going to do, I am going to first count the number of buds that have actually grown. So that is a reflection of the number of leaves. For a good bonsai we want close internodes. And one of the benefits of Akadama is that it is supposed to produce close internodes. And therefore at a similar amount of growth it should have more buds. Simple as that. Then I'm going to take them out of the pot going to shake all the substrate off and we're going to look at the roots. I am expecting the ones with Akadama to have more fine roots and that these two be a lot coarser. Let's get started. Let's start counting the buds. And I'm taking the point where it was cut off last year. Here this has died back all the way to here, so I'm starting counting here. This is one, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. 19 on this one. Next one. You know what? I'm just going to. Yeah. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. 15 on this one. And on this one, this is the cut point. There's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, left as well. Cut point. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. 19. 19. Also 19. 16, 17, 18, 19. 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. And this one. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Right. That is 49. Uh, 38 and 25, that is 50, 63. And 19 and 16, that is 35, plus 22, that is 57. That is actually interesting. So this is 49, 
63 and 57. That means that these, although have grown long, they have not created a lot of leaves. So there is a long internode here. This is a reflection of access to lots of water. This one has 63 buds created this year on the main stems, which is by far the biggest. And this is 57. So the Akadama has indeed at pretty much the same amount of growth created more buds and therefore the internodes are shorter, which is beneficial to ramification. So that's one of the promises of Akadama. Yeah, it happens. There are more buds on these than on these. This is of course not very scientific. It's not a very big sample size, but hey, let's now cut off the roots at the bottom of the pot, pull them out of the pot and toss off the substrate. This is a little bit tricky because of course the roots that have escaped have not grown in the pot, so I can't actually see those. Um, but yeah, let's just cut all of this off. So I don't count whatever was grown in the ground as being part of the root ball. And yeah, I know that if one rooted into the ground faster than the other, that might affect the growth. But you know what, that's too much detail. This is just a quick experiment to see what is actually happening. It's diatomous earth. There is um, bims, pumice in there, and there is bark in there as main components. And what you can see, the roots are still active, even though we're the end of November, and the pot is just full of roots. Um, I don't think we're going to get a lot of conclusions from this one, I'm afraid. Maybe I can actually untangle one of those, but yeah, that's just the amount of roots that didn't escape, right? Look at that. Right. And this one as well. Did you actually notice this root hook? This was made by uh, Bobcat Bonsai, and he forges this himself in his home. Now let's take the ones with Akadama in it and see whether the roots are very different. One thing that I notice is that there's not as much going on. There's not a, not a lot of roots growing around. Again, nice and open root ball. If I compare the small ones, yeah, this might actually be a little bit finer, the roots. Big one. This is the nice thing about uh, good bonsai substrate. It falls out without a lot of effort. So this is quite a nice clean root ball straight away. I do need to clean up a lot. Here you do see a lot of circling roots as well. So that's similar as the one growing in my own substrate, right? This is very similar. I would say it's actually pretty much the same. Well, just pumice and lava and zeolite. So this is just a basic mixture that I get from a commercial substrate vendor. And to be honest, this also looks pretty good. Pretty good fine roots in here. Then the last one, same question. Well, let's put these next to each other. Now, if I'm honest, so this is my own substrate, which has a large amount of diatomous earth in it, also known as kitty litter. Yeah, these little brown things, that's a kitty litter kind. Um, it has quite a few fat roots, but also a lot of these nice finer roots. But yeah, quite big roots in here. However, if I look at the one with Akadama instead of the kitty litter, you also get these big fat roots in there. So not a massive difference, although there's a little bit more maybe on this finer roots. But yeah, very subjective. And here without any clay base in there and just the lava pumice zeolite, lots and lots of fine roots, not the very fine fluff, and also here some very, very big roots in there. 
and for this little one the same story. So all in all, what can we conclude here? And mind you, this is a massive, massive simplification, but I don't see a significant difference in root development in any of these substrates. If you just look at them, these root balls are not fundamentally different from each other. Um, what I do see that the grow, and that's the same thing for the absolute growth. So the height that they reach is similar. Also, if you look at the thickness of the trunks, I'm not gonna say that there's massive differences between the different substrates. Look at these, these trunks are the same thickness after one growing season, right? What we did see, however, is that the internode length, or actually the number of buds per length of the tr new trunk, the number of buds per length of the new trunk is... The internode... <laughs> but what we do see is that there are shorter internodes on the small trees growing in Akadama. So that might be a slight benefit finer ramification if you're using Akadama. So in the refinement stage, it might actually make sense to start using it. However, the difference is not so big that I'm completely convinced that it is just the Akadama or something else. Um, let's grab my piece of paper again. So my own substrate at 49 versus Akadama at 63, that's a, that's a real difference. But if you just look at the Akadama versus the pumice, 63 and 57, that's only two buds per trunk. That's not a massive difference. So I'm not sure what's going on. Now the question is, of course, what am I going to do with these? Am I going to pop them up again? I was actually not planning on creating something with elms, but I am making a little forest of elms. So I might just prune back all these roots and chuck them in a pot until spring. And in spring I'm putting together a forest and I can use these also in there. Now forests have shallow root balls, so, and don't do this at home if you don't know what you're doing. I have been reprimanded by some people that I am giving bad advice, or at least dangerous advice. So don't do this unless you know what you're doing, because, yeah, these might not live. But I don't care, because I don't have any plans for these, except for maybe next year, plant them up. And with that, I'm going to leave you for now. I wish you a very nice winter. See you next time. And until then, keep growing bonsai. Story of me. The tools are blunt. I need to sharpen them again. Why are always all my tools blunt? Can someone tell me that? Mind you, this is just this is just storage for winter. <laughs>